Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the epistle reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. You'll find it on page 4 of your folder. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our text, Paul is talking about the greatness of God's grace, the wonderful nature of God's mercy and love for us. And then he turns and he says, but we have this treasure from God in jars of clay. And he's talking about you and me. Now, the imagery is probably pretty easy to get. Since man was formed from the dust of the ground, from the clay, if you will. But the imagery goes much farther than that. Not only hands-on formed by the Lord, but formed with a purpose. You may remember that the Lord called all of the other creatures out of the ground into existence. All the other beasts of the field and so forth. But when it came to man, man was uniquely created. God took the dust and formed it with his hands. And then in an act of love and devotion, he blew into him the breath of life. That's a close encounter. And that's a unique distinction. Man was created uniquely because he had a unique purpose. Let us make man in our image that he may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every creature that moves along the face of the earth, created uniquely and beautifully by our creation and by our purpose, we are set apart. But you wouldn't see that so much if you really looked closer at the jars of clay that Paul is talking about, because those jars are nothing too fancy. They're not something that you would look at and say, wow, now there's a beautiful jar. Not at all. They're really kind of dull and boring. They're either a burnt color, a burnt deep reddish color, or a gray color. Nothing too fabulous about them whatsoever. In fact, one commentator said, these vessels are cheap, utterly common, the least valued, used with little care, and are bound to break sooner or later. Indeed, they are very fragile. And so are our lives. Our lives are very fragile. They can be upset and broken in just an instant. We, as sinful human beings, are not beautiful creatures, but we are created uniquely and loved by God. It is into these kinds of jars, these kinds of ordinary people, that God has placed this great treasure. Sometimes we say it's like he gave to you and me the keys to the kingdom of heaven, when most of us won't even share the keys to our car with somebody else. Listen to what else Paul says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts boast in the Lord. Indeed, we have to admit that the strength of our life is not found anywhere in us, but in the Lord alone. What a beautiful gift the Lord has given to us. It is a way perhaps for us to remain a little humble, but does it always work that way? In humility, sometimes we go a little bit overboard, don't we? And we focus only on ourselves, and then we either become pompous and proud, or we become crippled and paralyzed. 
we forget that it is God who is at work, who has made us and who will make use of us. When we think about this life, we cannot think about it apart from the fact that God has sent us redemption. Redemption in his son, Jesus Christ, our human brother and our saving Lord. And lest we get the wrong idea, he too came pretty dull and boring. As we read in Isaiah 53, 2b, he had no beauty nor majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. And in fact, we are reminded throughout the scriptures how sinful man, even those who should have known, rejected him time and time again. The strength is not in us. The power is not in us. It is all in God and from him alone. Not even our brother Jesus was awesome to gaze upon. But what is awesome to gaze upon is that we see in his very face the heart of Almighty God. A heart that is filled with love and mercy and compassion for all people. A heart that is willing to sacrifice everything for the likes of you and me. As we look upon our brother Jesus hanging on the tree of the cross, certainly tortured and dying, there is absolutely nothing beautiful to our human way of thinking. And yet, when we look at what he has done there, from a spiritual perspective and point of view, how can it be anything other than more than endearing, but beautiful? In fact, a mysterious wonder that he would give himself into such agony to rescue and save you and me. As we look at our lives and we see our fall into sin over and over, there's not a day without it. In fact, this last week I was talking to someone from adult class and they said, well, you know, I was looking through the commandments like you asked me to and I thought, well, surely, surely I've kept this one. I haven't murdered anybody. And then I looked and I haven't even kept that one. I said, no, there's none of us that can stand before the Lord without being guilty of breaking every single one of those Ten Commandments. We do not love God and neighbor as we ought. But God's love for us continues. In his eyes, you are the most beautiful of creatures. In his heart, you are the one that he has set apart to be his own. And you have been created in love and with a purpose. You see, the Lord has redeemed us. And he fills us with the very love of God in Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sins and the power of his own most Holy Spirit. And the true value of our life is found in the fact that God has chosen us and filled us. In fact, what is valuable is not from us, but the Lord himself living within us. And that is important for us to remember. Because no matter where we go in life, we will have questions and struggles. And in our modern society, we are constantly called to see all of our flaws and to buy this or to do that in order to make ourselves at least somewhat acceptable. But our Lord has come to us when we are not lovely, when we are not lovable. He has come to us to gather us to himself and to pour out the fullness of his love on us, not because we live the life that we should, but because we cannot live at all without him. And he desires that we live in him and he in us. What was important in the life of Jesus was not his outward beauty, but the beauty of his life given for the sake of others. We see it in the miracles. We hear it in the teaching. We see it especially upon the tree of the cross. His life given for yours and mine. And so God has chosen you and me to follow in his steps. To be unconcerned 
about our outward beauty and more concerned with the beauty of God's love that is given to us. To be filled with what is most important, forgiveness and all of its benefits, God's grace. But just like with those two containers that I had with the children, it isn't obvious until it's poured out. And so it is with you and me. When we are filled with the love of God, it pours out of us. And people see that there is something different. They see the things that we do just because that's who we are. When we are in struggles and trials, when we face temptations, then too we are poured out. And the Lord continues to make use of our situation and us as individuals to proclaim his mercy in the most desperate of situations and deplorable of circumstances. God has called you and me and filled us with his grace that we may be valued for what is within us and take that valuable gift into the world. And so I ask you, when we find ourselves in the worst of situations, is it possible that God has in store for us an opportunity for witness? Of course he does. And it's probably only when we are in those difficult straits that we'll really show what's in our heart. It is then that people come to know where our strength and our power is from and what it means for our lives. So you, child of God, Rejoice wherever you are, for you are God's creation, recreated in Christ Jesus. His workmanship to do good works which God prepared in advance for you to do. You are his, and wherever you are, he will proclaim his goodness to you and through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.